Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel again to a new video. So today I'm going to show you something about GitLab. So as you probably know, uh, GitLab is a place where you can store your repositories, uh, the same as in GitHub. And today I'm going to show you uh, how you can actually create a project on GitLab to store your dot files. So you have to go to the GitLab page and register once. You will be asked, of course, for your email address. And once you have done that, you will be brought to the home page. Now, I have already some projects in here, but you will probably have none if you register the first time. And if you want to create a new project, you just go ahead here and click on the blue uh, new project. And you will have a choice here whether to create a blank project, you create a project from a template or import a project. If you have some projects already uh, on GitHub or uh, other providers that you want to import here, or you can also run a CI CD for external repositories. So this is up to you, but normally you would probably create a blank project. So I'm going to click this and you will need to give a name to your project. So we'll call this my Linux. This is just a demo and you will have here the project URL with the username that you will choose when you register and the project Slack, which will be basically the project name. And then you can put here a small description of your project. So let's say, for example, this is my demo Linux project on GitLab something like that. Then you can decide whether the project is private or public. So as you can see here, private means uh, project access must be granted explicitly to each user. If this project is part of a group, access will be granted to members of the group. Or if it's pl uh, public, the project can be accessed without any authentication. So this is really up to you. If you have some important information that you don't want to actually pub uh, make public, then go for private. But if it's a, another kind of project, you can go definitely for public. And I also recommend you to initialize the repository with a uh, readme file which in this case is going to contain actually the text that you put here in the project description but you can always change that later and then you can just click create project there you go so we have our project here and it's empty we don't have anything in here so here it's telling you basically what you can do with it how you can pull it down to the computer and so on but we have no files so what we can do we can for example add a readme file here so we can click add readme and actually, I thought that the readme file was going to be created automatically, but it's not OK. I mean, that the text was going to be put in from what we did on the project description. I, it was like that before. I don't know why it changed. Uh, but you can put here basically the instructions of your project. So in this project, you find the info for whatever and then click commit. Then you can see the change here and you can click commit and you have now your readme file so if we go back here to the project you can see we have the readme here and the content that i created now so if you want you can add a license if that's important to you you can go ahead and do that we can click here on add license and you can choose one of these uh, templates already in here or you can create one yourself if you want to i'm just going to put here a demo one very simply and then click commit changes this is really up to you if you want to do that and let's go back to the repository here and you can see now we have the license and the readme file so we could create a file as well from here uh, by clicking on the plus here click a new file and if you have something that you want to paste in, you can you can just do that. Or if you have a file on your computer that you would like to put on the project, this is actually what I'm going to show you right now. So let me go over to the terminal. And the thing we need to remember here is this one. This is the address that we will need to pull down with the git command. So let me actually copy this and go down to the terminal. And let me actually increase the size of the terminal a little bit so that you can see better. And what we can do here, we can actually, let's create um, um, a file, a, a file with Vim, just a temporary file. It doesn't matter. Let's create it by typing in Vim and I'm going to call it test file. I'm going to call it .sh, whatever, and hit enter. Now, this is the Vim editor, so I'm just going to type in here, hello. This is a new file. 
There you go. Just a very simple example. Then we can save this file and exit Vim. And let's pull down the project. So let's do that by typing in git clone. And let's paste in the address I copied before with Control shift and v on the terminal here and then hit enter now you can see this is a public project so i wasn't asked for any authentication and now we can move into this project by typing in cd and then my linux because that's the name of the project and if i type in, in here ls you can see I have the two files I had on the server, so license and the readme file. Now let's say I want to bring here in this um, Vim file that I just created. So to do this, I can type in, in here, copy, and then that's in my home directory, and it's called testfile.sh, and I'm going to copy it in, in here in this project. So I'm just going to use the dot for that and hit enter. And now if I type in ls, you can see I have the test file sh in here. This is not yet on the, on GitLab because we haven't uploaded yet. We need to first add the file by typing in git add and then the file name and hit enter. And now we need to commit to it. So we can type in git commit and we can use the dash m switch here to send a message uh, to put a message also on GitLab. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send here a message. I'm saying added the file or whatever. This is really up to you. There you go. And now we can actually add the file by typing in git push and hit enter. So it's gonna take a moment to do that. Now I have to authenticate. So I'm typing here my username because I'm changing something and my password. And as you can see, now the file has been uploaded. Let's go back to GitLab and let's refresh the page here. And as you can see here, we have our test file sh here added. So we can actually also click it and you can see the lines in here. We can also edit it and we can add a line here too. We can say, for example, I am on the server and we can actually save this. You can also put here commit message if you want that. Update is fine for me and then commit changes. There you go. And now if we wanna see these changes also on our computer, we have to go down to the terminal and let's clean it up. And we can type in git pull and hit enter. So there you go. And we can check again here our file by typing in vim and then test file sh. And you can see I am on the server is now there. So this is a very quick example how you can create your own GitLab uh, project and use it on your computer. So if you try this out, let me know in the comments below how it's working for you. And if you have any question or any comment about the video, also let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as usual as soon as I can. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. As you probably already know by now, I'm doing live, webinar on, uh, live webinars on Patreon every month where you can come in and also ask your questions live. Uh, we are using Nextcloud for that. And uh, the Nextcloud Talk, which is a great function, which is a great uh, app for Nextcloud. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. So thank you so much for watching the video, guys. And I'll see you very, very soon in the next one.